Hey everyone, I'm Katie from Addicted to DIY, and today I'm partnering with my friends from Craig Tool Company to show you how you can build your own DIY nightstands. New bedroom furniture has been on my list for quite some time now, and I wanted to build something that was unique but also fit my style. I designed these nightstands with what I can only describe as a parquet style top, but with a southwest twist. I started with 8 quarter and 4 quarter knotty alder that I purchased from my local hardwood store. However, I designed the plans based off of dimensional lumber sizing for anyone who doesn't have the ability or desire to mill down their own rough cut lumber. Starting with the 8 quarter lumber, I cut the pieces down to size on my miter saw, then moved over to my table saw to mill them down into 1.5 by 1.5 inch sticks, which translates to a 2 by 2 in dimensional lumber. I next moved on to the 4 quarter lumber and cut all of those pieces down to size as well. I ripped them down to 5.5 inches wide on my table saw and 5 and 3 8 inches wide for the drawer front. Normally, I would plane these down to 3 quarters inch thick, but I liked the sturdiness of the boards and leaving them thicker wouldn't really affect anything with the overall dimensions of the project, so I kept them at their full thickness of about 1 inch. For the bottom shelf of the nightstands as well as the base layer of the top, I used 3 quarter inch veneer plywood. I used my Craig Rip Cut to rip the plywood down to the width I needed for the pieces. I love using this tool when I either can't use my table saw or frankly just don't want to bother with it. It can cut up to 24 inches wide and can work with most, if not all, circular saws. I cut the plywood pieces down to length on my miter saw, which didn't quite reach the whole depth of the wood, so I flipped it over, lined up the cut, and finished trimming off the rest. Before assembling the nightstand, I needed to drill pocket holes into the 2x2 pieces. I set up my Craig K5 pocket hole jig at 1.5 inches depth and set the collar on my drill bit to match. I drilled the pocket holes into each end of the 15 inch and 25 inch 2x2 pieces. Before assembling any project, I like to sand everything down to 220 grit. I found that it is far easier and you'll get a better finish if you sand everything down before putting all of it together. Then all you're left with is a bit of touch up sanding at the end. I started assembling the frame by gluing and clamping the 25 inch pieces to the 28 inch legs. I attached them with 2.5 inch pocket screws. With the front and back sides together, I attached the 15 inch pieces with glue and 2.5 inch pocket screws. Make sure when assembling this that you position the pocket holes so that they will not be visible when the project is finished. For the top of the nightstands, I positioned the pocket holes to the inside of the frame. For the bottom, I positioned them facing downward. I cut 3 inch blocks to set the height for the bottom frame pieces and then glued and attached them in place with 2.5 inch pocket screws. For the shelves, I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes on all, all four sides using my K5 pocket hole jig. I set the bottom shelf in place, flush with the top edge of the 2x2s, and secured it with clamps, then attached it with 1 and a quarter inch pocket screws. For the top shelf, I set it in place so that it would be flush with the underside of the 2x2s at the top of the nightstand. I used a scrap piece of 3 quarter inch plywood to help with this and attached it with 1 and a quarter inch pocket screws. For the side panels, I drilled 3 quarter inch pocket holes into each end and one edge of the boards. I clamped them in place and attached them with 1 and a quarter inch pocket screws. To make the parquet top, I ripped down 1x2 boards on my table saw, though you can do this just as easily with just purchasing 1x2s. 
I cut all the pieces down to size on my miter saw, fitting them into place and trimming as needed. I included a diagram in the printable plans of the approximate sizes, though it's always best to measure and cut to fit so that everything fits together tightly inside the frame. Once the whole design was finished, I glued the pieces down one by one and then secured them further with one and a quarter inch pin nails. I had planed the pieces down to be just a bit thicker than 3 quarters of an inch and had to do a good amount of sanding to get everything smooth and flush with the top. In hindsight, I should have just planed them down further, but after a lengthy sanding session it all worked out. Next up was the finish. I chose golden oak stain to match the barn door I had built in our room earlier this year. I stained the entire piece and the drawer front and set it aside to dry. While the stain was drying, I got to work building the drawer. I cut down half inch Baltic birch using my Craig rip cut. For some of the smaller pieces, I secured the wood down on my Craig track horses and continued ripping them down to size. I cut the pieces to length, then drilled half-inch pocket holes into the drawer sides. I sanded everything down smooth, then began assembly. I glued the sides to the front and back pieces and attached them with 1-inch pocket screws. I added a bead of glue to the bottom of the drawer, then attached it to the bottom with 1-inch narrow crown staples. You can also use a brad nailer and 1-inch nails for this. To install the drawer, I used my Craig drawer slide jigs. I set the placement of them using some 5 inch blocks that I had cut and clamped them to the table legs. The drawer is inset, so I used my Craig multi mark to set the placement of the drawer slides and then marked the hole locations with a pencil. I took the drawer slides out and drilled pilot holes to make it easier to drive the screws in and attach them. I tried installing the drawer after this, but quickly realized that the pan head screws I had used to build the drawer were catching on the drawer slides. I ended up taking those screws out and replacing them with standard round pocket screws, rather than the pan head screws, which stick out a bit with the half inch pocket holes. I slid the drawer in place on the drawer slide jigs and attached the slides to the drawer box with the included screws pulling the drawer out completely to attach the final screws. For the drawer front, I used the Craig cabinet hardware jig to pre-drill the holes. The cabinet hardware jig has markings in inches as well as millimeters to match up to the hardware you choose. These drawer poles were 128 millimeters, so I set the guides to match that and then set the height of the jig for the drawer pole to be centered on the wood. I drilled the holes with a 3 16 inch drill bit. To set an even eighth inch gap for the drawer front, I used stacks of playing cards on each side as well as the top. I drove one and a quarter inch screws through the holes to temporarily attach the front then pulled out the drawer and drove one inch screws through the inside of the drawer box to permanently attach the front. I took out the temporary screws, finished drilling the holes through the drawer box, and then attached the handle in place. The finished nightstands not only have room for storage with the drawer, but also plenty of storage on the shelf for baskets, books, or whatever you like. 
The subtle Southwest Parquet top adds a little something extra to the whole design and I'm so happy with how this project turned out. Special thanks to Craig Tool Company for partnering with me on this video today. For more information about the Craig products and tools that I used, make sure that you check out my description below. Also, for more videos just like this one, be sure to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I've also queued up a few other videos that I think you might enjoy. Thanks so much for watching.